Hello, praise the Lord. Amen. I'll never miss saying God is good. He is good all the time. And we dive into another moment. We thank God for the opportunity that he gives us all the time to worship him and to make a reflection on his word for our betterment. And so that we shall be useful in the situations where we find ourselves. We are continuing with our episodes, Finding God, and I'll never miss mentioning it because there is life in finding God. And the issue that we are talking about as we have started is we are reflecting on a prophet called Prophet Elijah. And just like we shared, his, the meaning of his, word, his name, Eliyahu, means Yahweh is God. My God is Yahweh. And so Elijah, the prophet, we continue thinking about him. And chapters 17, 18, 19 in 1 Kings. And we shall flow into 2 Kings chapters 1 and 2. But the point that we discover, dear brethren, about prophet Elijah, the man that God chose from nowhere and placed him somewhere. And just like we have heard people give testimony that who, me whom you see, I was from nowhere, but God made me uh, to be somewhere. And Elijah, from nowhere, he becomes a prophet and he speaks God's word during the situations that were. And so Elijah was as human as anybody. And I've said this before, and I say it again, that he was a human being like anyone. He was like any one of us. He was like you. He was like me. He was human with human frailties, human weaknesses. But he served God because he had found him and made him his anchor, the anchor of his life. So he had doubts. He had struggles. We therefore get to know who God is as an empowerer, who God is as an energizer, who God is a God that sets us apart. And the reason why we have people who are called set apart, the priestly family, the prophetic family, and these people that bring God's word set apart. And uh, that's why in the times earlier and in and times next, there are people called Nazarites, set apart for God's work, and Elijah was. And so God, since God is wonderful, he, is, he desires his people to worship him, he brings people on board to guide through the times that are not easy, the times that are challenging, and Elijah appeared at a time that was so challenging, and here he comes to tell the people of Israel during the time when they were in confusion, the Canaanite religion was at its peak. Remember King Ahab had married a woman who was Jezebel, who, was one of, who had been one of the priestess, priest, priestesses at the altars of you know, Baal, and she had become his wife. And so there was confusion in the kingdom. But he comes and he brings light where there was darkness. So when you are wondering about God's presence and God's provision, Elijah is the man that we look at because he fled and he was alone, just like we saw in the previous episode. But even in the aloneness, even in the need, God provided for him. And so in this story of Elijah, we find God the provider. And we read in 1 Kings chapter 17, Verse, of course, verse 5. And the Bible says that, so Elijah did what the Lord had commanded him. He left and lived by the Wadi Herit, where it enters the Jordan. The ravens kept bringing him bread, they kept bringing him food and meat in the morning and in the evening, and he drank from the Wadi. And after a while, the wadi dried up. The well dried up. 
because there had been no rain in the land. Of course, he had prophesied that there would be no rain for three and a half years. And what he had prophesied also actually took him by surprise that there was no water. But the message had come true, praise the Lord, that he had prophesied and it was true that the rain was not coming. And, but God provided for Elijah. Brethren, when you talk about God's provisions, this is our life. It's your life, it's my life. Abraham knew, and it is then, during Abraham's time, when God provided the lamb to be killed instead of his son Isaac, the name Jehovah Jireh began. The one that provides, God that provides, Yahweh that provides, Jehovah that provides. And so in this situation, for Elijah, God is the provider. And I just want to encourage us. There are situations that I've found myself very challenged, but God has seen me through, and God sees you through. Is it a situation of school fees? Is it a situation of a job? Is it a situation of lack? Whatever lack that is, you don't have anything. God remains a God the provider. And you can imagine God uses the ravens, the birds of the air that don't dig, that don't, you know, that don't know anything. But the Bible is saying God commanded the ravens to bring food for Elijah. And they did that morning and evening, morning and evening. And he kept drinking water from the wadi that is called the wadi or the well that was just next there. And so, friends, God provides. God will take care. And the reason why many of us, you and I, are testimony possibly. You've seen God's hand in your life. You've seen God, how God has provided for you in situations where you thought that things are impossible, that things are so hard. No wonder the word of God says, whatever is impossible for man is possible with God. And this is actually what we, we live on. We encourage ourselves day by day, moment by moment. And Elijah's story is an encouragement to you, is an encouragement to me as well. And these are extraordinary provisions. And I stand, I sit here to announce that God still is in the business of doing his extraordinary provisions for his people. He has done it before, he'll continue doing it before, as long as we remain connected, we remain channeled in his power, in his presence. And Elijah was commanded, grieved, and he left, and he moved, and he was directly under the guidance of God himself. And another extra Ordinary provision. First Kings 17, 8. God also directs Elijah to go to another place. And this is, he gives extraordinary provision. The first one is ravens, and then the second one is, he commands him in this way. Then the word of God came to him, get up. And this is very important, get up. Go to Zarephat, that belongs to Sidon. And stay there. He says, go. Get up. There are moments when you are, you know, you, when you are so low, you are down. And the word of God says, get up. Arise. Another version will say, arise and go. And so you may be in the bed, sleeping and feeling weak. And then you remember that actually you must get up. And so arise. Get up. And so this year, 2023, we say, arise. Get up. And this is what encourages us. For me, it energizes me very much. Every time I read God's word and there are phrases like this, there are phrases of energizement. Get up, arise. And so he tells him, go to Zarephath. I have commanded a woman who is a widow to provide for you there. And widows are vulnerable people. You know, of course, actually, maybe you may could be having something to live on. But in the Bible times, there were vulnerable people, there were the poor people, and they needed help from other people. And even during our times, we've seen the lives of widows, very, very, very hard lives. And the people who want to grab people's land, they run for the widow's land. If they want to mistreat, they want to mistreat, because they seem vulnerable. But we thank God that this portion of scripture also emancipates a person who is vulnerable. And I think this is a big lesson that the widow at Zalefat was emancipated, was lifted to support Prophet Elijah. And so we pray for vulnerable people in our society, the widows, 
call them uh, the orphans, call them the, whatever they are, the vulnerable ones, that God will emancipate them, God will lift them, so that they can be of support to the church leaders, to the church of Christ, isn't it? And so this is very, very important. The widow at Zarephath was emancipated, was encouraged, and God has said that you go there, I have commanded the widow to take care of you. And so when he went, indeed, he found the widow and he was, he called to her and said, please bring me uh, some food, some water in the cup, some food and things like that. And in verse 11, chapter 17, as she went to get it, he called to her and said, now, just not just water, but bring me some piece of bread, some food in your hand. Listen to me. God had sent Elijah to this widow, and there was something that extraordinary that was going to happen, and this energizes and encourages me very heavily. And but she said, As the Lord God lives, I don't have anything baked, only a handful of flour in the jar, and a bit of oil in the jug. Just now, I'm gathering a few, a couple of sticks here, a little firewood, in order to, to go and prepare some camel little meal for myself and my son, we can eat and let him die. Can you imagine? Because that was the last portion, the last portion of the meal that we was going to. And God does his things. I praise God that actually this portion of scripture come to teach us lots. There will be a situation when you think that this is the last meal that I'm eating and there's no more. You may think that you have now reached the end of the rope of the road. But listen to me. There's someone who said that actually when you come to the end of the rope and you're hanging on it and you think that you're going to fall, he said, tie a knot and hang there. And so this lady knew that actually she had now been sentenced to death, no more food. But listen to me, it's at this point that prophet Elijah arrives. Praise the Lord. That he arrives and this is the point that we're saying, finding God, there will be lots of things that will happen extraordinarily in our life. And so, then Elijah said to her, don't be afraid, be encouraged. In verse 13, go and do as you have said, but first make me a small bread out of that and bring it to me. For this is what the Lord God of Israel is saying in verse 14, the flour, the jar flour, the flour of jar will not, will not become empty, will not become empty and the oil jug will not run dry. Right? Until the day the Lord sends rain on the surface of the land. And to this we say, praise the Lord. That this is really encouraging. This is the message that we find ourselves. So she proceeded and made the food and brought it to Elijah. And the Bible says that her and her household ate and had enough for many days. Your God cares. Your God provides. And so the flour jar not become empty. And the oil jug did not run dry. According to the word of the Lord that he had spoken to prophet Elijah. Brethren, this is the word of the Lord. And the Bible says that the Lord God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same God that provided for Elijah, may he provide for you this year, this moment, this situation, this time here. Truly God provides extraordinarily. God is a God of tender care. Huge lesson for us that he who provided for people decades and centuries before, he's the same that provided for Elijah during this time and he'll be the one to provide for you even now. He provided for Hagar and her son. That is a story that we read in Genesis. He provided for the children of Israel. Every day, man, manna and Whales meet, he will provide for you on your journey. To the widow and her son, it was a sustaining word of promise. So, my brethren, 
The point is find God and find life. Elijah had this in mind, Eliyahu, Yahweh is my God. And so I pray for myself and I also pray for you that God will be your God. May God be your God. Point number two is trust God moment by moment. You may be in a trying moment now. Trust God for the next moment that's coming. Today, trust God. Tomorrow, trust God. Elijah proves it here that he remained faithful and extraordinarily God provided for him. I am believing in this God that was with this man, Eliyahu, this God will remain with us. And the widow at Zarephath was emancipated to support the work of God through this prophet Elijah. And I pray for you that you'll be a great support to the work of God as God empowers you to do ministry. May he empower another person. So the empowerment comes from all and, and so that God's work will continue. It was a difficult time of the drought, no food, no rain, but God extraordinarily provided for Elijah the ravens first, and then the widow who did her great work in supporting the work of the ministry. And because she was obedient, she listened to what the prophet instructed her, go, and she went. Even when she said, we have very little and we are going to die. She said, now go and prepare. She went, prepared, and her jar never ran empty. Her jug never ran dry. I pray for you that God will continue providing for you that your jug will not run dry, that your jar will not run empty, that God will continue sustaining you moment by moment. Now you continue trusting God moment by moment. And Elijah proves it to us here. And may we continue finding God and his life. There are miracles that happen. There are extraordinary happenings. And we position ourselves to tap into that in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.